Well, I woke up about eight o'clock. I went downstairs and uh, he was cooking toast. He had toast going, um, which was burning. I took it off the stove, it was all burning. I made some fresh toast, um, put it on, put it on the table with some coffee, and Joe drank it and ate the toast. Uh, and he wasn't talking to me at all now. He was, uh, uh, he must have been well peeled up. Um, he took a painting off the wall, one that he'd painted himself, put it next to the electric fire and let it burn. And he said, they're not effing well getting this. And then he gave me the final note. I'm leaving now, I'm going now, I think it said. Goodbye. Um, and he went straight upstairs. Uh, and then the next thing I hear, I could hear music again. Two, three minutes later, up come Mrs. Shent, and well, she just whispered to me, what's going on, you know, what sort of mood is he in today? I said, oh, God, you know, he's in a terrible mood today. Um, she said, oh, I'll sort him out, love, don't worry. Um, where is he? I said, he's up in the studio. Oh, don't worry, she said, I'll sort him out. Um, with that, she gave me the cigarette that she was smoking. She said, can you hold on to that for a minute, please? Meaning that she, she was only going to be up there a second. Um, and I took the cigarette from her. Um, I walked into the office and put it in the ashtray. And she was upstairs and all of a sudden I could hear, calm down, Joe. Where's the book, he said. And Joe said, um, I want the book. I've always drawn the conclusion it must have been the rent book. Um, because there'd been a lot of problems with the, uh, the rent being paid and uh, the lease of the building was about to run out. And uh, I, I, I just walked back into the office and I heard the bang. I mean, it was an almighty bang. Um, I ran out. I was just about to run up, to, up the stairs and Mrs Shenton was falling down. And she'd, she, she fell down right to the bottom of the stairs, uh, right into my arms. And uh, I was instantly sort of shocked. I didn't know, really didn't know what had happened. Um, uh, then I, I gently uh, sort of pulled her down and I just shouted up, she's dead. You know, I assumed that she was dead. I, I had no idea if she was, but I assumed she must have been. Um, uh, I, I attempted to run up the stairs when I heard the second bang. And uh, I sort of looked over and I could see Joe lying on the floor. The gun beside him. Well, he was very high strung up in the last twelve months. He was a sick. He was a sick man the last six months. There's no doubt about that. He was taking these tablets for depression, and. Uh, they didn't seem to do him a lot of good, but uh, he needed a good, a real good rest. That's what he needed. He should have come home before. He should have come home and had a good rest, and he'd have been all right. But did you, did you, or were you aware of any reasons why he needed to rest? What? Well, we knew he was overworked. I mean, well, the pressure was getting to him when they done. Um, I mean, he lives in a different world in London. If I call out your name like a song Joe Meek shot himself on the 8th anniversary of the death of his idol, Buddy Holly. <laughs>